Hey Game Master, this is GM Jim here to talk to you about how to link separate and unrelated one-shots into a coherent campaign. And I'm going to do that by detailing four different one-shots by Winghorn Press, one of my favorite 5e publishers. They're not sponsoring this video, although if they wanted to throw some free stuff my way for talking so nicely about them, I wouldn't be opposed to that. <clears throat> I'm about to take you on a journey, so let's do this. The adventures we're talking about are A Most Potent Brew, Horror at Havel's Cross, The Hound of Cabell Manor, and The Wild Sheep Chase. The Wolves of Welton is another of theirs that's highly touted, but I don't know, that one doesn't do it for me. Obviously, I'm going to spoil the crap out of these adventures, so if you don't want that happen, be gone. Click away now. One nice thing about these one-shots is that they all use the basic 5e rules, which are free, and I think some or all of these adventures are also free to download from the Winghorn Press website. Can't beat a cost of zero dollars. First, let's discuss some general tips about linking one-shots. They all need to take place in the same campaign world and in the same region of that world, since our PCs are going to be low-level and therefore not have access to globe-trotting magic and technology and they should all be leveling sequentially or you need to adjust the encounters so they work out that way. We're going to link these four adventures so they start at level 1 and end at level 5, and so we'll need to provide the connective tissue, the main thing that turns this into a campaign. And the obvious way to do that is while there's a mini-boss in each adventure, we need to have one big bad unifying everything. This can be done well, or this can be done poorly. If you saw Daniel Craig's run of James Bond movies, they tried to do this retroactively in one of the movies and it just didn't work. Bond was fighting unrelated baddies in the first three or four of his films, then in one of them, they dropped this bomb that there was a shadowy organization behind it all, but it felt hokey. It was clear, at least to me, that they hadn't planned it out that way from the start. But your advantage is that you get to plan your campaign out from the start. So let me give you a brief overview of each of these adventures. In a most potent brew, the PCs meet at a tavern that is built next to the ruins of an old wizard's tower. They're hired by the barkeep to deal with some rat trouble in the basement, which leads to them exploring the tower itself, and they find mutated monsters who, plot reveal, got into the wizard's leftover potions. In the horror at Havel's Cross, some archaeologists hire the PCs to escort a valuable artifact from a dig site to a town. Of course, the artifact is cursed, it all goes sideways, and there's monsters to fight. In the Hound of Cabell Manor, a family is plagued by a fiendish creature who tries to attack them every night, and it turns out their ancestor made a deal with the devil that has now come due. And finally, Wild Sheep Chase is a bonkers adventure about stopping a wizard behaving badly who has gotten his evil mitts on a wand of true polymorph. That last one is very fun. But woof, all these seem totally different from each other, right? How are we ever going to link them into a coherent story? Don't worry, I got you covered. But it's important to note that I'm only laying out a blueprint. Be ready to pivot based on the choices your players make, just as you would in any campaign. I think we can use two common adventure tropes here to make this work. The first is the big bad, which we'll get to later. The other is to go the route of the Triforce, or the Rod of Many Parts, that is, finding and combining X parts of a whole thing in order to gain some kind of knowledge or power. We've got four adventures, so we'll have four pieces of a thing that need to be acquired and joined in order to defeat the main baddie. These story beats are what we'll have to add or adjust in each of these one-shots to link them into a coherent story. Let's talk about A Most Potent Brew. As an aside, I generally dislike puzzles in 5e because they're either too easy or too hard, but this adventure has a really good one. I won't spoil it. Anyway, we're going to need to adjust the end and the beginning of this one-shot to turn it into a campaign. The first thing we need to do is to make sure the presence of our added main villain is felt from the very beginning. Pick any big bad you want. Assume that the party will eventually face them when they're all at 5th level, so choose something challenge appropriate. But a good narrative choice would be something like the Baroness of this fiefdom. Since she's a public figure, everyone will know about her. That way, any NPC the party encounters can complain about the Baroness, talk about what a jerk she is, and how they wish some group of heroes would come along and depose her. And make it clear to the party that they should not do this right away, because she has some kind of magical immunity amulet, or better yet, some kind of seemingly unbeatable magical protection on her lair. And I'll explain why we need that in just a moment. 
So the party hears about the evil Baroness and, seemingly unrelated, gets hired to help with the wizard tower problem. So the middle of a most potent brew can basically be run as written. But at the end of how this one shot is currently laid out, the party just finds some potion rewards after exploring this tower and then it's over. Let's change that. Instead we're going to add crucial pieces of plot in the final room of this wizard tower. And that is the wizard's journal. Make sure the party finds this. Don't hide it from them if they roll poorly on their investigation check. Just make it obvious and let them find it. And this journal is going to contain a wealth of information. The adventure as written doesn't say anything about the wizard who lived in the tower, but we're going to give him a name, you pick, and a journal that describes a deep hatred of this Baroness. Apparently, she's a very old and powerful creature, not actually the human or elvish woman that she appears to be. The wizard made a magical object to counter the powerful abjurations the Baroness has on her, but he had to split it into four parts to keep it safe while he worked on his plan. This is the overall plot hook to our campaign, so make sure your players understand this part. And unfortunately, the wizard died before he was able to reunite the parts and enact his plan to take down the Baroness. That detail could be some kind of cryptic final entry about how the Baroness is closing in. Let your players draw their own conclusions. But also, the journal will name these four pieces, and one of them is sitting right next to the journal. We're going to make this first item a special leather hilt for a club weapon. The second will be a magical club made out of bone. The third is a particular jewel that sockets into the club. And the fourth will be a magical rod that also attaches to the club. Only when joined as a whole can this device work. The journal could include some kind of incantation your party can read aloud that will help guide them from one piece to the next. That's up to you if you feel like your PCs need that. And when the parties now leave the Wizard's Tower, they're at level 2, and we transition into the second one-shot, Horror at Havel's Cross. The party should soon hear that a group of local scientists has made an important discovery at a dig site, a magical artifact in the form of a club. The PCs should easily be able to piece together that this is the second item they need. The adventure has the party meeting with a halfling scholar who wants to hire them to escort this magic item from the dig site to a safe place in the big city. The woods are dangerous and yada yada, so the dig site workers need a chaperone, and they're currently holed up at a nearby inn, waiting. Maybe your party will think of stealing the club from these workers, or they might straight up ask the halfling if they could borrow it. If they ask, the scholar could be amenable to this, because she is obviously all in favor of taking down the big evil Baroness. Now we can run the second one-shot mostly as written. The party goes to the inn, but there's no workers there, just dead bodies. So there's some murder mystery investigating, then they eventually go to the dig site where they do some more exploring and investigating. They eventually find an undead mini-baddie who is holding the club, which is the magical artifact. The adventure says that the club is cursed and requires attunement by an evil creature, but I think we can just skip over that part. Either way, afterward, the Halfling Scholar isn't going to want anything to do with this troublesome club and will probably just let the party have it. And now they can see where the jewel sockets into the side and also where the rod would attach. The PCs should definitely feel by now that they're making progress. That's two adventures down and two to go, and the party is now at level three. Next, they're going to ask around about the jewel and the rod, or maybe have some downtime first. The jewel is in the third level Hound of Cabell one-shot, and the rod is in the fourth level A Wild Sheep Chase one-shot. The party wants they could find them in either order, but if they go for the rod first, you're going to have to do some encounter balancing to make that work. It's a lot easier if you gently push the party toward the Hound of Cabell next. Maybe the Halfling Scholar could look at the club and say, you know, there's only one jewel in the entire world that could fit into that slot, and it's at Cabell Manor. So now we transition into that, but before launching into this actual one-shot, we should insert an encounter or two of our own. Because while the party is working ultimately toward taking down the Baroness, it's important that we continually insert reminders of why it's important to do so. Maybe by now the Baroness has heard of the party, and so she sends one of her generals to fight them. Maybe she has one of her goons hurt an important NPC that the party cares about. The point is we don't want the party to forget why they're doing this, and make sure that you regularly have NPCs continue to talk about what a jerk the Baroness is. Repeatedly work on building up her villainy in the party's minds. 
So the party goes to Gabel Manor and learns that the family who lives there has been troubled every night by a fiendish creature who keeps trying to break into the house. The Cabells could just straight up offer the party the jewel in exchange for helping them deal with this situation. Maybe your PCs will decide to just heist the jewel from them instead, so be ready for that. And if they do decide to do that, you could probably just spring some of the events of this one-shot during the heist. Anywho, the party is clued into the Cabell's problem. They learn about the deal with the devil their ancestors made, and they either help them with that or they don't. Either way, make sure they end up with the jewel in their possession when it's all said and done. Now there's just one piece of the puzzle to go. We're on to a wild sheep chase at level 4. I love this one shot. One nice thing about this final adventure is that it has a strong start built in. The players are having some downtime somewhere, drinking at a pub, and decompressing after the kerfuffle at Cabell's Manor. Then a sheep with a speak to animal scroll barges in, insistent. When the party reads the scroll, the sheep can now talk and he says that he is a good wizard who is polymorphed by a bad wizard with a special wand. The PCs will probably now recognize that this rod is the final piece they need to complete their item to take down the Baroness. But if for some reason they have no clue, this good wizard could probably just tell the party that it's part of a set and somehow sense that they have the other three already. Maybe this sheep wizard knew the wizard from a most potent brew. Anytime you can link NPCs between these one-shots, it helps provide more connective tissue and make it feel like one continuous story. Now you can basically run this fourth level wild sheep chase one-shot as written, which is a really good one. They go to a treetop lair where the bad wizard has some polymorphed guards around. Party will possibly even fight a bed polymorphed into a dragon, which is just nuts. Pure fun. Anyway, once they've defeated the bad wizard and claimed the magical rod, they can attach it to the club, and the whole thing hums with power. This is it! Now they can break the magic seal or whatever on the Baroness's lair, and finally take her down. And they've leveled up to five. Now it's time for the final push, and you're gonna have to do a bit of work here, but how much is entirely up to you. You'll need a map for the Baroness's lair, but that could be as big or as small as you want. It could be a four or five room house or mansion, or it could be a three-level, complex dungeon. It's entirely up to you. Party uses the four-item thingy to gain access, and then they have the final fight. The Baroness is defeated, and now your party are local heroes. And wouldn't you know it, you've now turned four completely unrelated one-shots into a coherent campaign that's lasted probably five or six sessions. Good work! If you do run all this together, let me know in the comments how it goes, or let me know how you would modify it to run it better. Maybe instead of four parts, you make it an item that requires seven or eight parts and you include some of the one-shots from Candlekeep Mysteries or Keys from the Golden Vault. Totally up to you. Until next time, this is GM Jim telling you to go out there and string together a story with glue and duct tape and have fun at the table.